Welcome to the Media Training Quick Start Audio. I'm Jess Todd Feld, the author of the book Media Secrets, a Media Training Crash Course. It is a pleasure to meet you virtually. And I am recording this because I want you to be able to get started. So by the end of this audio, you will have many of the main ingredients to feel like you can start the process, as well as some of my top media secrets. So let's jump in. Here's your first secret. You must always begin by asking yourself, what do I want as a result of these interviews or media attention? What do I want people to do? So this is very important because unless you begin with the end in mind, unless you know what your destination is, you will not do a great interview. So while many media trainers, I'm a media trainer, I run a media training and communication training company, while many focus on body language and going out there and getting some of your messages, what you'll say together, all that is great and important, but unless we know the outcome we want to create, we won't be able to create it and you won't really get the job done. So this audio and book will help you create a path toward the right outcome. And likely income, if that's your aim. So why are you doing interviews? Why are you thinking about or already out there? Is it for brand building or promotion of a product or service? Are you on the defensive? Are you dealing with a crisis? It's a completely different issue. Are you trying to sell something? So this book and these techniques that I'm going to get into right now today will help you. And the techniques are not a one-size-fits-all. I cover many different situations in the book. So you have to figure out what is right for you. But for now, I want to give you enough so you can feel confident as you move forward with interviews. What I notice running media training workshops is people always use the word feel. They want to feel better. So it is one of my goals for you. So not only will you get the techniques and the skills and learn the secrets, but I want you to feel better during interviews. So let's jump in. The media landscape is constantly changing. What was effective as far as getting your message out there yesterday is just simply not enough to get the results that you're seeking. So whether you're giving an interview on TV, in print, Radio, Twitter, to a blogger, Skype, Uvu, Zoom, Livestream, Ustream, Google Hangouts, Facebook Live, Instagram, you get it. The game has changed and you have to be ready and you have to be ready for all of it. So we're not limited by the old definition of media, meaning traditional TV, print, and radio. It's so much more now. And there are new platforms being built every day and many more that you can take advantage of to go out and be the media. So I'm planting that seed for you. So I want you to be ready when someone interviews you, and I want you to be confident enough to go out there and take control. So let's start with the question, what is an interview? So most people will say, well, it's one person asking questions and another person asking them. And what I will say is it's actually one person asking questions and it's the other person strategically weaving in messages and answers they thought of in advance and doing it with a clear goal or outcome in mind. So it's important for you to realize that is what really is happening. And I'm not talking about spin or dodging. I'm talking about being in control of your answers and where you want the interview to go And still being able to be authentic, a very important part. So here's another secret for you. If you look calm and comfortable, people will perceive you as calm and comfortable. If you appear relaxed or comfortable, the reality is people perceive you that way. Even if you don't feel it yet on the inside. So think about that. Can you look the part? Can you go out there and at least look the part? This was important for me when I made the transition from being a TV producer, and I had done some on-air work here and there, to being a guest, going out there and being in the media myself and talking about communication topics and people in the news. I realized 
I need to look the part, and then I'll feel it. If you appear relaxed or comfortable or confident, people perceive you that way. Very important. So there are two things at play in interviews and two things you are looking to master, style and substance. So my question for you is, which one is more important, style or substance? Think about it for a second. It's a trick question. They're both important. You can't just be all style, no substance, or all substance, no style. You must have both. So let's talk about you figuring out if your style or your substance is working. This is the secret for knowing. What most people do is they go and do the interview and they wait until they see it, if it's a TV interview or radio, hear it, or receive it if it's a printed interview, and then decide what they think. But the secret for knowing in advance is practicing with a video recording device. Good news, we have one built into all of our smartphones and our other devices, and it's super easy for you to practice in advance. And if you don't practice in advance, you will have no idea until you go out and do the real interview. So it's better to make mistakes beforehand. You should figure out what's working, do more of that. What do you want to improve? Make those adjustments and keep working on it. A phrase I like to tell clients, and I'll tell you since we're now meeting each other, is act it and become it. So while you may not feel like the expert or the star or the person who is amazing at delivering interviews and speaking on camera or to the media, you need to first act it and then you'll become it. Let's talk body language. All right, so these are quick. This is a quick start. These are some quick strategies. I don't like the word tips. Tips are throwaways. Strategies are important. So these are strategies for doing a better job with your body language. So while I have some videos that are in the bonus site, you can certainly watch those and get a head start and see those. You obviously can read the book and read about that. I will basically tell you if you use your head, meaning allow your head to move around, move your hands, allow those to move around, and allow your body to be relaxed and move around, you will look good on camera. It will look right. And if you forget either your head, your hands, or your body, you won't look great. So I encourage you to watch one of those videos or even take part in the Media Ready in 30 Days or Less e-course. You can check that out, but you can definitely start today thinking about that and practice on camera. Now, when it comes to your voice, you need to play with the highs and lows. Pausing like I just did. You need to do this in advance of interviews. You need to do this when you're on the phone. You need to do this when you're talking to friends or colleagues. You need to record yourself when you can. You can hit record on your phone or on your computer when you're just talking to other people or on a phone call. Obviously, don't record the other person because that is illegal many times. But record yourself. You can listen in for ums and ahs. By the way, for ums and ahs, you want to practice exchanging them with a pause. Much, much better and more effective. But you want to hear how you use your voice. And are you really hitting certain words and topics so it can punctuate how you feel? Very important. Let's talk about fear or worry. So a lot of people come to me and they're, they're worried about interviews. And they say, maybe it's a fear of speaking. Let me explain what a fear of speaking really is. It's really a combination of fears where the top Fear is fear of the unknown. And the unknown for you is you don't really know how it's going to go. You don't know what the interviewer is going to ask you. You don't know what the situation looks like and feels like. So the more you eliminate the unknown, the more confident you will be as you show up. If we're talking about an interview, don't badger them and ask them 10,000 questions. But if you get a sense of how they work, pretty much what they're going to ask you, Many times they don't write down the questions, the interviewers. They have a basic idea, and then they think of the questions on the spot. The more you can eliminate the unknown, the better you will feel. If you can get a sense of what the location looks like, feels like, the better you will be. If you can take a look at past interviews or articles 
a reporter has written. And as I mentioned reporter, that's only one type of interview you might do. But again, I want you to think about the elements, and the more you can eliminate the unknown, the better. Let's talk about sounding good. So we're still in style right now. And really sounding like you are interesting. So when I was a producer, and I would chat with guests who were in the green room, which is the waiting area for guests, and I would ask them about their topic and what will you be doing when you go out there, often they sounded low energy, which is deadly for interviews. It's deadly for the audience. It's deadly for the producer, which was me at the time, because it won't look good for our boss. It is boring. People will tune away. And it's deadly for you because nobody will be interested in your topic. So back in those days, the only way I could help people to get their energy up was to offer them donuts. <laughs> Not really good for their health, but it was good short term for my show. I have a better technique now, which is now I bring up one word when I want to bring your energy up. And that word is passion. I ask the question, why are you passionate about what you do for this topic? Why are you passionate about it? And I'll see people light up. And ideally, you are passionate about it. If not, you have to find another place that can get your energy up and get you there. But if you're not passionate and excited about your topic, no one else will be. So make sure when you practice your interviews that that passion that higher energy is coming through. Another secret is leveraging interviews is something you need to think about every time. So what does that mean? It means getting the most out of interviews. It means being able to convert interviews into something real. So if you say it's about brand building, well, how are you taking that interview and how are you getting it in front of people who didn't see it the first time, or hear it or read it? Are you pushing it out through social media? Are you pushing it out through your own social channels or your emails? How are you getting it in front of people? Are you paying for traffic? Some of you know about that. In the book, I talk about what you can do to leverage interviews before the interview takes place, during the actual interview, and after the interview. So you can go and look up that information. Let's talk about plugging for a moment here. So the old idea of plugging was that you are uh, forcing your solicitation or brand mention right into the middle of the interview. And that seems less than authentic. And often it does come up as less than authentic. When I work with authors, Authors will hold a book up, up in front of their face and basically say, please buy my book. And that seems a little desperate. Don't be that person. You don't want to do that. There is a better way to plug. And by the way, I share these same techniques with CEOs. I work with the United Nations. It can work for you. So there's a new definition when it comes to plugging, and it's an acronym, P-L-U-G, which now stands for Properly Leverage Your gift. I spelled your, you are, to make it work. Properly leverage your gift. And what that means is you need to lead with a free item. You need to give somebody something of value, and I'm modeling it for you right now, which is this audio. So you bought the book and you said, wow, okay, that's pretty cool. Quick start audio. And you can give away something similar to this or different in an interview to get people to take a next step. We want them to discover you and whatever great, amazing thing that you are promoting or plugging, and ideally they take a next step. So it could be a top 10 list, it could be a white paper, it could be an audio, it's up to you. And then when they go to your website, wherever it is that you send them, then you can show them what it is that you're selling and ideally get them to take a next step. And again, not everybody is selling something. Maybe you just want to get them to your website to look around, to learn a little bit more about your organization and what you do. If you're a nonprofit, maybe you're trying to drive donations and you want to bring them to a page 
that gets them thinking about that or on a mailing list. So I want you to think about how you can bring that up in the interview so that people can be in the world of what you do and then take next steps. Let's move on over to messaging. So messaging. A message is anything that comes out of your mouth. A media message is anything that comes out of your mouth that should be in the interview. How do you figure out your best messages? Good news, there's a whole chapter on that. And I'm going to give you the shortest version of the techniques right now because this is the quick start audio. So you start out by taking out a clean sheet of paper. You can type, it's okay. And you write out for five minutes, seven minutes tops, nothing longer, or you'll never stop this exercise. And you write out the answers, not the questions you might get asked in your interview, but the answers you wish you could deliver. That's what you do. And you do this for five minutes, seven minutes tops. And at the end, you'll look at these answers and say, wow, if I said half of these things, this would be a pretty great interview. Most people never do that. And there's a second part that's explained in the book. And I give you part of that in the bonus videos where you then create a grid where you have three columns. So think three columns. And you organize those answers into the three columns and give it a one-word heading. And as long as you remember those three words, you now have a perfect roadmap for every answer. So those three words are your three key message categories, which is different than the old way of media training, which was to say, come up with these three answers and say them over and over again. That doesn't fly anymore in the 2000s. So don't repeat over and over you'll now have different variations of these main ideas and places you want to go. So check out that chapter on messaging if you want to hear more about that and learn more about that. How about sound bites? So we've heard about sound bites. Some of you know what they are. Some of you are a little bit fuzzy. Basically, a sound bite is that short bit of sound or that answer that makes it into a piece. So you can still use paragraphs when you're talking. Good news. It's not about talking in short, halting ways. It's about peppering in great, amazing, killer answers in the paragraphs of what you say so that those outlets that slice and dice and pull out certain answers will use those messages. In print, they call sound bites quotes. And they only use certain quotes. You may only have one or two quotes that make it into a story. So in the book, I break down 14 elements for creating the perfect quote. I've done tests with my clients, and I've done tests myself. I sent out one email to about 1,000 newspapers, and 50 of them printed my quote. That is a pretty good ROI and a pretty good day when they go and do that. So this stuff works. And it's not necessary the second you're starting. I don't want to overwhelm you. So if you start out and you can get some messages down, you can practice on video, you can get some of your body language right, you can at least get started. Let's jump over to dealing with questions, what I call the answer system. So you may have heard of this thing called bridging. Maybe, maybe not. And the technique that media trainers talk about, they say, go from where you are to where you want to be. And that tells you nothing. It's too vague. It's not helpful. How do, how do I get there? I don't know. Go over the bridge. It's not helpful. So here's the new system. When you are asked a question, you can give a short answer that ties a bow on that question. And then you now have control and you can move to wherever you want, like a message from each of those three message categories that we just talked about. So if I were asked a question about politics and I didn't want to go in one of the two directions, I might have a short answer like, look, time will tell. Here's what both of these candidates need to do. And then I get to move into messages that I was hoping to bring up. That would have been my short answer. If they brought up something negative or or terrible, isn't it true your company does this? My short answer might be, no, here is how our company helps people. 
So now you're getting the idea of the short answer and moving over to the longer answer, which is what you want to say. And that's where you include a three-part message. And that's where you include information from that message system that I brought up a little bit earlier. And obviously, I go deeper in the book on this. In the book, I talk about the I don't know technique. I talk about being able to reframe in your brain a question that's terrible, tough, tough questions, so you can go deeper on your own. Are there public relations secrets for getting more press and getting booked? Yes, that's right in the beginning in chapter two. So you can check out some of the techniques that I learned when I set a Guinness record for getting the most interviews and being interviewed the most times in 24 hours, which was 112 different radio stations. I've done quite a bit of TV and print as well, but that was for radio. It was pretty great. And I give you my template for getting more interviews. So you can check that out. Maybe you are worried about or dealing with a crisis. You can check out chapter nine. And really, we've divided up the crisis chapter or chapters into three chapters. So you will see that the following chapters focus on mistakes that people make and traps, media traps. And we've done that because some of you may just want to know about the mistakes or some of the traps. And if you're dealing with a crisis, the biggest secret is you really need to prepare in advance. It really is a special situation. You need to have a crisis plan. You need to do a media training with all the people in your organization before crisis strikes. You really can't wait and be trying to play catch up where the media will own the narrative. Not great. So when it comes to any of the types of interviews that you're doing, I want you to succeed. That's why I help you in all of these different formats. You'll notice the book is in text. I'm speaking to you now in audio. There are videos in the bonus area. If you're serious about taking your media game to the next level, you can join one of my programs, either in-person media training or the video-delivered self-guided study course called Media Ready in 30 Days. Maybe you want more publicity and you want to do it yourself. You can check out the PR Secret Weapons course at prsecretweapons.com. And that is helpful not just for the do-it-yourselfers, but for publicists who are listening to this right now. How can you have the edge and be able to get more publicity for your clients? So I go much deeper with that program. And you'll see links to those in the resources section at the end of the book, at the bottom of the members area that you've logged into right now. By the way, save your login and password to be able to access this again and your login is likely your email address, so that's easy to remember. And I hope you can write down or remember the password that you came up with so you can return here and you can get more of the resources. So I want to leave you with this thought. You can do this. You do need to practice. You need to take some sort of action if you want to succeed when it comes to media, whether you are using it for your marketing or brand building, or getting people to take next steps, building your business, whatever it is, I want you to take either baby steps or big steps. Some of you are big step people. Do it and do it big. But I want you thinking, why not you? Why shouldn't it be you out there? Why shouldn't you be out succeeding and doing this better than most people? Because you can, and you've already taken a first step. So go out there, act it, and become it. I'm Jess Todd Feld.